Oh my gosh. Oh, look at all that sand. This is not good. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna loosen the belt for the impeller. It's highly suspect at this point, the circulation pump. I really doubt that that's got any kind of issues at all. Whereas this impeller is probably gonna be my main suspicion in terms of the culprit for the overheating condition. We'll go ahead and loosen up that worm clamp as well to see if there's anything stuck in here. But that's gonna be my first plan of action. So let's get to it. Let's go ahead and loosen those bolts off and uh, see what we got going on. We got the belt off of the impeller. Check this out. Other than the paint flaking off, <laughs> you think that's good? I can't even turn this thing. It turns all right, like right now, but I tell you what, that is definitely toast. Yeah, that's a huge problem. Okay, anyway, let's go ahead and disconnect these worm clamps. We need to get this thing off. This is definitely our culprit right here. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at all that sand. This is not good. Let's see if we can pour some of it out. Oh, should I even get that in my build cherry? Look at this. Woo! Let's see if we can come around here. Should probably clean that up here. That's not good. That is probably throughout the motor as well, so. We'll have to go and work on cleaning out all these hoses. We'll go ahead and remove them all and try to flush all the sand out. But yeah, this is what happens when you run into a sandbar. Good times, right? Let's go ahead and work towards it. I'll show you all the steps to get the sand out and I guarantee you we'll get this thing running cool again. But your impeller, unfortunately, is gonna be toast. So we'll go ahead and unbolt this. Definitely don't try to reuse your impeller by any means, but yeah, let's go ahead and unbolt it and then we'll start working through all the other hoses and uh, get all the sand out of here. Now that I have the impeller removed, I'm gonna go ahead and force any kind of sand that came in to the boat back out through the stern drive. Let's go take a look. I've got the water hose going full blast. Now what this is going to do is we are going to let this run for a while and see if we can get any kind of sand to come out. I'm going to let it run for quite some time. So anything that is stuck in there, it'll have a chance to be pushed out. It looks like this bottom hole right here is now just starting to clear up a little bit. And that one, if you look, actually still has a little rock in it. So I'll go ahead and get a pick and we'll see if we can get rid of that rock. All right, here it goes. The rock is right about there. Oh, there it goes. All right, you can see here we have a pretty steady stream now. Let's see if there's anything else in there. Let me try to remove. Last thing we want to do, oh look, here's another little rock, got it. And this is why I say you need to kind of take your time when you're doing this, because you may find more little rocks in there that could go back into the impeller. And even after you fix it, you could destroy it again. So definitely let it run a little bit and see if there's any little foreign objects in here need to come out. That one looks good. Let's see here. Okay. 
That side looks good. Let's go ahead and take a look over here. So this side has a pretty good steady stream as well. Let's just fish in here a little bit. Let's see if we find anything. Tell you what, I really do miss those filters. Alright, here we go. Anything in there? Let's see what looks like a little rock in there. But maybe not. Okay. It feels like it's all clear back here. I'll go ahead. And check the line itself and see if there's any more issues um, on the input line. Now that we've let this run for about 10 minutes on both sides, I don't see any more clogs coming from this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hook up the earmuffs and force water back through the line and see if it pushes any rocks the opposite direction. So let's give that a try now. We can call this line, which is the uh, input line, clean. We flushed it from both ways, and I didn't see any kind of leaks out the bottom side, and nothing new came in. Now what we're going to do is the part that goes into the motor. We're going to actually disconnect the lines and flush them out manually. We got the upper portion of this hose out. I took a look in there and it doesn't look like I see any sand. What we'll probably do, I know this thermostat was open at the time the sand started making its way into the motor. So we will go ahead and at least open up this side of the line because remember, it's, sand is pretty heavy. So it's, if it is in here, it's going to be kind of towards the bottom portion. And we'll do the same over here as well and we'll check if we can find sand anywhere in this portion like i said we'll go ahead and start working on flushing it out if anything we'll we'll hook up a water hose here and flush out all the risers on both sides and make sure everything's nice and clean now you can see we have both of the riser hoses disconnected and inspecting them looks like they're pretty good and i'm going to put a hose on these individually so we can flush them out each side it doesn't look like, as long as we don't feel any kind of clogs, they will, I'll, I'll probably run them for about 15 minutes each to make sure we flush out. This next hose right here that comes into the thermostat housing and goes down into the water circulation pump, also known as a water pump on a vehicle, like a car or truck, but just a recirculation pump and a boat's configuration. But we'll go ahead and loosen up this hose here and see if we can find any kind of sand at the bottom like i said it's pretty heavy so if we find any in here i'm going to be a little bit more worried than i already am because it possibly could have destroyed that circulation pump so let's go ahead and remove that now and see what um, what it looks like here goes let's see if there's any it's not the clearest of water So it doesn't give me a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. Ugh. Yep. Sand in there as well, so. We'll need a flush. Definitely gonna need to flush the motor out because it's in this circulation pump. If it made it this far, it's likely that it made it further down into the motor, so. We'll need, a re, um, we'll need a flush probably from this section. I'll see if, since we're already behind the thermostat, we'll see if we can flush from this side as well. Get all that excess stuff out. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and clean out the thermostat housing and then dump some water down this elbow, which connects into the intake manifold. We also are gonna clean out this hole and then these two little guys over here to make sure both sides of the thermostat housing are clean. As you can imagine, this is kind of important as well. We don't want to get any kind of sand stuck in there. The other piece we're going to do is these hoses right here connect down into the 
riser manifolds for the exhaust. We have one on each side. You can see I've disconnected them from the thermostat housing. And we're gonna go ahead and take our water hose. And likely when you go to fill this up like, like so, it's not going to actually drain out the back. Rather, it's gonna build up a good amount of pressure and then dump downwards like that. So don't expect um, too much out of this hose because like I said, it's going to end up draining back out as you fill up that manifold riser and it goes to the top. It's gonna dump the water right back down. I'll stick the water hose up here and let that run for a while because there's a little metal impeller in there. We want to try to clean all the sand if there is any out and then this will kind of help disrupt it as well. All right, so that's going to be the plan so far and then we've already cleaned out the stern drive. Okay, so this is the last hose that I just cleaned out. Got all the sand out of it. You can see we've flushed both risers out and reconnected the hose including the one that went to the circulation pump. We've also installed the water pump and belt back into place, which leaves us to this hose. Now this hose is gonna be the last one. And then hopefully we can get this guy started. And let's cross our fingers. We didn't ruin a head gasket or even worse something more expensive, but yeah, we'll see. All right, so here goes. Let's give it a try. All right, so that's a wrap for this video. Hope you liked the episode. As always, hit that subscribe button, like the video if you thought it was helpful, and we will catch you on the next episode. Have a good one.